Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, I've got another series I'd like to put out called Words to No Profit. And the reason I'm putting this out is there's a lot of, i say, debating, arguing, um, and fighting going on among the brethren when it comes to certain words. Are there certain words that we are to fight over, like stand for truth? And are there some words that we're kind of taken and blown out of proportion and trying to, how do I say this, you're trying to fight where there is no fight, or you're fighting the wrong way, okay? In other words, you're just trying to fight a fight to fight, trying to start an argument for argument's sake. How many times have you heard that, brother and sister Christ? You're just arguing for argument's sake. You're not trying to try to reach, I've tried to reach people for the truth, and it turns into an argument because they don't want the truth, and they're just arguing for argument's sake. And then there's times where you just, whether you're tired or you can try to make up excuses, there's still no excuses for it, but you just get this negative attitude that you just start a fight, just to fight. You just, for some reason, you just, you're negative, you're tired, you just, you start wanting to get into a fight just to get into a fight. And you find yourself arguing just to argue for argument's sake. Okay. So the Lord put it on my heart that, um, John 17, 17, it says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And we're going to go through and we're going to talk about certain words that have come up recently among the, the, the body of Christ. Okay, save sinners. And um, we're going to talk about them, see if we're arguing with them in the right sense, or are we being PWCs? Remember what PWCs are? Polly want a cracker. You know, someone's... Uh, we're just repeating what someone before told us and someone before him told him and the person before him told and it just keeps going down and down and you're like, but is it coming from here? Is this our foundation or is history, uh, a culture, culture, okay, uh, traditions of men, is that our foundation or is this our foundation? Some brethren have really just turned their back on the word of God going off of traditions, Heritage. All right. It's like, ugh. when you get back to this as being our foundation in all matters of faith and practice. I used to say that when I first got saved. It's been, got away from that for a while. And we need to get back to saying that this is our foundation on matters of faith and practice. If someone says something, be very careful. The Bible talks about good words and fair speeches deceiving the hearts of the simple. Someone can quote scripture and then add to it and be so sly about it and just add to it or subtract from it and be very sly about it. But they use scripture, but they're very sly about it. I've noticed that among some of the brethren. Be careful, brothers and Christ, that you're not using traditions of men and throwing in things that aren't in here. But you've heard someone else teach you and that person, you know, and it goes back generation after. Be very careful about that. Turn to 2 Timothy 2.14. Second Timothy okay. Now you can read, you can pause the video and you read Second Timothy chapter two, one through thirteen. But basically it's talking about when you look through here, our goals as a Christian, how we're supposed to live our life as a Christian. But I got this the reason I titled this Words to No Prophets, because we get to chapter two, verse fourteen, we read of these things. Okay. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. Verse 12. If we deny him, we also deny us. We're going to get through, and some of the words we talk about has to do with suffering for Jesus Christ. If you start striving about words to no profit, first, we'll read all the way to verse 14. Of these things, put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord, that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. Bible says, cast not that which is holy among the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine. Why? Because they'll turn around and rend you. There's times that you will suffer because you are striving about words to no profit. You're going to get in fights and arguments with brethren where there's no profit out of it. What's going to happen is you're going to end up causing division. You're going to end up causing separation. You're going to end up losing fellowship with the brother in Christ over argument over something that's not worth arguing over. 
You're creating a fight when there is no fight. Satan loves this. The lost world loves it. Uh, God doesn't love it. Okay? He warns us. He says, charge them before the Lord. Capital Lord. Jesus Christ. Remember 1 Corinthians 8, 6. There's but one capital G, God, the Father, and one capital L, Lord, Jesus Christ. Okay? Charge them before the Lord. They strive not of words to no profit. You're not going to suffer for Jesus Christ. You're going to suffer because you're getting strong into striving about words to no profit. Living for the Lord. You're not going to be living for the Lord. You're going to get into the uh, what's going on in the body of Christ right now. Backbiting and whispering. Gossip. You know, striving. Trying to choose sides. I'm on this side. I'm on that side. Over a fight that's not worth fighting over. You're striving about words to no profit. And we're going to get into that. Another verse, real quick, this is just going to be an intro. Uh, I had a brother in Christ when I was talking to him about this subject. He, he pushed me over to Matthew, chapter 23. Go to Matthew. See, we just read New Testament. We're not supposed to strive the words to no profit. And yet, Matthew, even though it's in the collection of books called the New Testament, it's still technically the Old Testament. Okay, before the New Testament comes in, after the death of the testator, that's in the book of Hebrews, and the death of the testator, Jesus Christ, after he died on the cross, that's when the New Testament comes in. So this is Old Testament. We read New Testament passage, 2 Timothy 2.14. We're going to read an Old Testament passage, Matthew 23, 23. Now, what's going on here is, is Jesus having to deal with the Pharisees and the scribes and the Sadducees. I'm going to throw them in there because he has to deal with all of them all the time. Those are the three main groups that are causing fights and arguments because they're not going off of God's word. They're going off traditions of men. They're going all off the love of money. It'll be a whole other study I want to get into eventually about Pharisees. Going through, there's more definitions to a Pharisee than just somebody who holds the traditions of men above the word of God. But I've been called a Pharisee by a brother in Christ who I love and care about, but evidently he just, he just, he just doesn't have much love for the brethren anymore. And he's just flinging names out there without following the Bible and the Bible definition. Okay. But that's what Jesus is doing. He's having to deal with these people. So verse 23, it says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cummins, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law. They're arguing and striving about words. The law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These are ye have to done, and not to leave the other undone. So it's not about uh, the matters of the law. Okay, there's judgment. There's mercy, and there's faith. These are three big important things about the law. And they're, going, they're striving about words to no profit. How do we know this? Get to verse 24. Ye blind guides would strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. They're strain, they find one little thing over here that they want to hold on to and fight over, and they're missing the big picture. They're missing the important stuff. There's things worth fighting for, and there's things that are going to distract you. They're just a distraction from fighting for the things that are worth fighting for. Like fighting for the true plan of salvation, the true gospel. Repentance towards God. What is repentance? Coming to God broken. What does broken mean? You have sorrow in your heart for sinning against God. Before, you didn't have sorrow in your heart. Yeah, I'm a sinner, but I'm okay with sin. I love sin. Sin's not that big of a deal. I'm the one. You can be as God's knowing good and evil, like Satan said in the Garden of Eden. You can be as God's knowing good and evil. I, I, I'll decide what's right and what's wrong. That's not repenting. Repenting is falling at the foot of the cross, having sorrow in your heart for your personal sins that you've sinned against God, knowing that they are wrong, that you've wronged your Creator, and because and the cost of that sin is going to send you to hell and then to the lake of fire to burn for all eternity. That sorrow, that's the brokenness. That's what makes repentance true biblical repentance and makes it work. That's worth fighting for. 
the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, when you truly get saved and born again, the death of Je that's the proof that you truly believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Why Jesus died? He died for those sins that you had sorrow in your heart for. He died for your sins. Was buried and rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. The old man dies with Jesus Christ, and the new man is raised three days later. How can you believe in vain? 1 Corinthians uh, 15, 1 through 4, uh, when you deny the changed life. Oh, there doesn't have to be a changed life. That's worth fighting for. The, the true plan of salvation. Okay? Confessing both your repentance and your belief in prayer and asking God to save you. Asking God to save you. Begging God to say, I don't deserve this, Lord. I deserve to go to hell. I don't deserve to go to heaven. That's worth fighting for. And when I'm talking about the changed life, I'm talking after salvation. When God saves you, you ask Him to save you, and He saves you. He looks at your heart. Your heart is right. He saves you. There's going to be a changed life. But the false gospel of today is, is we want a free pass to heaven without having to have a changed life. Without having to repent. I don't, I don't, I'm not sorry for my sin. I want my sin. I want to keep my sin. How can I claim to be saved and get a free pass to heaven and still be able to keep my sin? That's the false gospel of today. Easy believism. That's the false gospel of today. Fighting for the true gospel, that's something worth fighting for. But some of the words we're going to talk about, we're going to go through and show that there's some of the words they're worth fighting for, but they're not being fought for in the right way. And there's some words we're going to get through in here that they're not worth fighting for. It's just a distraction to get you away from the important things. Pre-time of Jacob's trouble, catching away the body of Christ. We have brethren that have been deceived into turning their back on um, the imminent return of Jesus Christ. And the reason they turn their back on the imminent return of Jesus Christ is they've gotten comfortable down here and they're loving the world. Love not the world, neither the things in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. They've turned their back on the imminent return of Jesus Christ, but they'll sit there and go, but I'm still a pre-time of Jacob's trouble, catch away the body of Christ believer. No, you are not. In words, yes, you can say it. Anybody can say it. But in deeds, you're a liar. Why? Because you've turned your back on the imminent return of Jesus Christ with the life that you're living. You've turned your back on it. You're no longer living every day as if Jesus Christ could come back today. And I'm telling you, the brethren have turned their backs on the imminent return that once believed it. They lived the way they're acting when they believed in the imminent return of Jesus Christ. The things that they did back then, I, I, I got to be a servant to the brethren. I got to do right by the brethren. I got to live for Jesus Christ every day. He could come back today. I got to get busy living for the Lord. That was their attitude when they believed in the imminent return of Jesus Christ. It's connected to the belief of the pre-time of Jacob's trouble catching away the body of Christ. When that belief disappeared, look how they've changed. Look how they treat the brethren. Look how they act. They, don't start, they start straying from the Word of God and becoming worldly. Traditions of men. Culture. Heritage. Worldliness. Oh yeah. That's worth fighting for to try to get those brethren back on the right path and get their eyes back on Jesus Christ. That's worth fighting for. Okay? But there's some things that are gonna, that brother are going to get to try to distract you and pull you to the left or pull you to the right and don't keep you on the right path of fighting for things that are worth fighting for. This is God's perfect written word. And I'll say this real quick. This is God's perfect written word. But does that mean that every word that I ever come out of my mouth can only be, has to be found in here? No. That's a non-argument. That's a distraction. Yes, this is God's perfect written word. And where can God's perfect written word be found? In the Holy Bible. Well, at one time it was just Holy Bible. Then all these Bible perversions kept coming out. So then they had to say the authorized version, the King James Version, the authorized version, Holy Bible. All right? This is where you find, it's an address. When we say Bible, it's an address. We'll get that in a whole other study in one of the, ne another part of this series. But this is where you find God's perfect written word. If I say bicycle, oh, am I in sin because I said the word bicycle? No. 
you become in sin if I say God's word says bicycle. Where can God's word be found? The Bible. In the Bible, it says bicycle. Then I'm in sin because it doesn't say bicycle in the Bible. I just want to throw that out there real quick. Words, no problem. That's a non-argument saying that every time we speak, it has to be words from this book. No, it doesn't. It's when you say, thus saith the Lord, it better be in Scripture. And then it better be used right. Remember 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. There are some people that will take things from here and they're not rightly dividing. There's some people that will read something and then they'll go off and giving you their opinion and adding left and right. They'll add left and right to what they just wrote, read. They'll purposely leave verses out that'll prove them wrong. You know, I heard one brother in Christ, uh, I think it's, um, I can't remember, Romans 14, I think it was. Romans 14 clearly says we have liberty. It clearly says we have liberty. Yet the word liberty is not mentioned at all in that chapter. Well, if it clearly said we had liberty, wouldn't it say liberty in that? See what I'm saying? But a lot of brethren get sucked in because he'll read the chapter, he'll read the verse, and he'll put truth out there, and then he adds a lot of lies. He'll add things to it that's not even there. And people just go with it. Oh, and then pat him on the back. Oh, this is a great teaching. This is a great teaching. And I'm like, uh, he just added to Scripture a lot. He just lied. Why are you patting him on the back? I don't care how great of a preacher he is in the past. Present tense is what you're supposed to be judging him with. Present tense, not past tense. Present tense. All I keep getting from some brethren when, when, when they're arguing and striving about words to no profit, whether they're adding to or subtracting from the word of God, that's the, the sin. Not me using the word bicycle. Truck. Microwave. That's not a sin. The sin is when you say, thus saith the Lord, and the Lord doesn't say it. That's when you become in sin. Now you're adding to or subtracting from, and the Bible condemns this. We're not supposed to do it. And I don't want to get off on too much of a rant about other studies. But we're going to get into this. So, first, you can use many words that are not in Scripture with your day-to-day -day life. Okay? It's when you say, thus saith the Lord. The Word of God says... The Bible, remember the Bible is just an address where you find the Word of God. The Bible says, the Bible reads, it's in the Bible when it's not in there. Then it becomes sin. Okay. So, this was just an introduction, words to no profit. And we're going to go through some words that I believe that some are, are worth fighting for. Um, and some that aren't... That, aren't being fought for in the right way. And there's some words that aren't worth being, that, that's not worth fighting for. It's not worth fighting over. Okay, it's a distraction to keep us from standing for absolute truth and living a life of Christ and fighting for the right things. Amen. So grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching.